see if we got a friends list. Oh yeah, we got one now. like to say good afternoon to all of our brothers and sisters on social media land. This may be, for those that are chiming in, it's a possibility that this video may just be a little lengthy. Because what we are aiming to do is we're aiming to bring an understanding to our brothers and sisters concerning Many of the ways that we conduct ourselves based on the things that other people in the world are doing. Oftentimes when we deal with things like this, it is almost as though it is taken personal or personal assault against the people that are doing it. It's not a personal assault against anybody as much as it is uh, trying to simply impart some wisdom and we know that wisdom comes through life's experiences wisdom is not something that can be gleaned from the studying of books or information wisdom can only be gleaned through circumstances that the most high send into our life and out of those circumstances comes an understanding that causes us to have wisdom in particular areas and in most cases, in most cases, the things that I speak about are not just things that are read, read, have been read. Most, most cases, the things that I speak about have come by way of personal life experience coupled by the word. So when you try to relate these things to your brothers and sisters and they only have information, a lot of times the wisdom is not there. But we know that I learned a long time ago that everything that's taught is not learned when it's taught. Because sometimes we used to teach things when I was coming up and was in church and stuff like that. You could teach things that were that were too high for people's comprehension because they had never been exposed. And Usually when you do that, if something is too high for a person's comprehension, it generally seems as though it's rejected. And I had to learn a valuable lesson that it didn't mean that those things would be rejected. It just means that now wasn't a point in time for that lesson that was taught to be learned. So there had to come an exercise of patience and and also, there had to be something that you would gain from it to understand that God is the one by his spirit that convicts a man's conscience. The spirit is ultimately the one that will lead. So when the Bible say things like one man plants and then another man waters, but God gives the increase, generally the one that's doing the seed planting is expecting immediate results. And when they don't get the immediate results, you just automatically think that there's something wrong with the people. But for the person that's planting seeds, they must understand 
that the seeds you planted, you will not get no immediate results for it, no more than you'll get the immediate results from you going to plant a garden. But there may be another one later on down the line that'll come and water that seed and fertilize it. And then at the point in time, God will give the increase. There is a passage that's contained of uh, uh, the noble contents in the Paulinian epistles where Paul had told the people, he said, listen, it's not a grievous thing to me to come and tell you the same thing over and over again. It's not grievous to me. Well, why was Paul in this condition? Well, Paul had wisdom in some areas that the common people that he was dealing with didn't have wisdom. He understood that everything that he was teaching wasn't going to be learned when it was taught. And until they learned it or until they got the message, he would have to come constantly come back and say the same things over and over again, sort of like a parent say, says with a child. There ain't no, no child on this planet that has the wisdom that their parents have. And the parents have to do that over and over again. So, um, so I'm going to start saying what I'm not saying first. Now that the Christmas holiday is over, I'm going to say what I'm not saying. For many of the brothers that have been sharing posts about Christmas, yes, you are absolutely right. Yes, it is a heathenistic. Yes, it is a paganistic day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is the, the root fundamentals of the, the day that, that the world have come to know as Christian uh, Christmas has its roots steeped in paganism. And you start dealing with Saturnalia and then sex and then the exchanging of gifts, which would be the exchanging of people that these crimes would be committed against. Yes, all of those things are right. They are right. The problem is, is that when you try and share things that you are just now freshly learning with somebody that don't know them and is not received, you can't go on a tyrannical campaign and you sure can't go on a tyrannical campaign because the same way that you are rebuking your brothers for what they're doing, that they're ignorant of the most high by his spirit and the word come and rebuke you for what you rebuking or for, for you rebuking your brothers. You have to be able to, to uh, digest the same thing. But the first thing that I want to say is that, Many of the things that are being shared are correct. They are right. And many of these days that people have come to learn to worship in these particular hours, they are not the most highest holy days. They are right. The problem with that is that until the spirit shows the brothers and sisters that are doing it, that they are not right until they receive conviction by it. You have no business meddling with people. When we get the scripture, the scripture is for us to live by. As we learn truth, those truths have to be applied to our life. Then our life becomes an outward expression to all of the brothers and sisters as to what it is that we believe. So when we start telling brothers, hey, listen, it's 365 days in a year. That is the calendar that most of us live by, you see? And then when it comes down to these paganistic, heathenistic days, we'll lash out at all of the people that are doing these things. But we don't fail to understand that even ourselves are steeped in guilt and sin. Even by the days that we call holy days that we are trying to serve the Most High by. Now, when we start looking at the Bible and the scripture, we'll look at it from the mindset that most of the people can attest to the fact that Jesus the Christ is Lord. We all agree with that. So right out the gate, right out the gate, I want to, I want to ask the question to all of the brothers and sisters that are on here. Before we even get started, I want to see 
how many sevens are going to go up? Because if we have any sevens that go up, that's going to be a line of distinction that is going to be drawn between the brothers and sisters who have been raised in a particular thing versus those that have not been raised in a particular thing. So, for everybody that is on this prayer thread, I'll let you in, King, but let me get my preliminary out the way. Everybody that is on this thread, if you have never celebrated Christmas, if you have never, I'm not talking about what you do now. Throughout the course of your life, for as long as you live, if you have never celebrated Christmas, if you have never celebrated Christmas, put a zero on the screen. And I'll wait. If it's anybody that have never celebrated Christmas, put a zero on the screen. Let me see how many zeros that we're going to have. Because when we look at the social media platform, we look at the social media platform, it looks as though nobody has ever celebrated a pagan day. That's what it looks like. So if it's anybody on here that have never celebrated a pagan day, we need you to stand up and put a zero up there. And th grant you, there are some brothers and sisters that have never celebrated a pagan day. So they think. Because when you were raised from a child, to do certain things. It follows you on into your adulthood. But there are children in this hour. Who are being raised. Outside. Of the heathenistic ways. Of this world system. So. If it's anybody on here. That have never celebrated. A holiday. Put a zero up there because the zero shows I ain't never celebrated the holiday. Now, this is what I want to get to next. If there's no zeros on the screen... That means that almost everybody that's on this thread at one point in their life have celebrated these holidays. But the reason we celebrated the holidays wasn't because we just chose to celebrate them. It was because we were taught to celebrate them as children. And as we grew up as children, we taught our children. And that thing has reciprocated itself down through the generations. Anybody on a thread that cannot say, I have never celebrated. You better be very careful how you deal with your brothers and sisters that have not come in contact with the same information. Now, let me show you why I be like I am. I would like to believe that I am a defender of the lost man, a defender of the ignorant man, a defender of the poor man, a defender of the one that don't know anything. That's what I'd like to believe. And in time that I see people coming against those that do not know anything, that is where we raise up at. Because when you really truly get the word of God down in you, you start understanding, I must lean to the things that the Messiah had instructed me. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is daylight. When did we ever see the Messiah in the scripture casting anybody down for the things that they were doing? When did we ever see it? When did we ever see the Messiah going to chastise the Pharisees and the scribes about what they were doing? He didn't bother them. The only reason that they got to hear from the Messiah is because they kept coming to him. And as they come to him, then he will have interaction with them. But he came for a specific group of people. Now, let me show you something. When I show you the difference between using wisdom, which come by way of personal experience, versus using information 
that you can Google and many people don't even understand. You go to Google, you go to Wikipedia, you go all that. You have already crossed off and entered into the realm of demons because you're no longer leaning to the spirit of the Most High, who is the controller of all information, both past, present, and future. You are now leaning to the information that is controlled by artificial intelligence, which is a wicked spirit at the root of that thing. And many brothers and sisters are learning things from wicked spirits and then bringing those things back into the family and then wreaking havoc. Amongst their brothers and sisters, they themselves do not even understand that the very information that you have been given access to, you have been given access to not to build up the family, but to go and wreak havoc in the family. Now, when I first found out that Christmas was pagan, it was around the area of 1993, somewhere like that. This is 2020, going into 2021. You're talking about some odd almost 30 years ago since I have celebrated Christmas. But see, the thing is, I didn't learn that from Google because there was no Google. And I didn't learn it from nobody's YouTube video because there was no YouTube. I didn't learn it from Facebook. There was no Facebook. I learned it because it was an appointed time for the spirit to teach me things that I needed to know while I was starting my work in ministry. And it was something that I stumbled across. I wasn't looking for it. I was content. Easter Sunday was coming up and I was content. And my, my first wife came and she said, she trying to get me back in church. She said, well, I want you to come to church and do a short piece on Easter. You see, the, the church folks was just like many of our brothers and sisters on social media. They were self-righteous hypocrites, self-righteous hypocritical people that thought that they had the truth. So my wife wanted me to come and do a piece those people were not ready to receive me. When I started to do the piece on Easter, and you can find these things, back then, I had a Dakes annotated reference Bible. And as I started to go and dissect the Easter, and I'm looking to go to church and do a good piece on Easter Sunday. So what I found, I found that there was no Easter. I found that the word Easter had been interjected in one place of the scripture, and that is where they had the Messiah, and they said, well, you know what? We know that Passover is coming, and this is where they attached it. So they said, we got to do this and save it until after this day, and then we'll do what we're going to do with crucifixion and things of that nature. But as I started diving in, to this Dakes Annotated Reference Bible and start looking at the commentary. We start coming in contact with Astoreth, the God of Fertility. We start coming in contact with the egg and we start coming in contact with the weeping of Tamos and we start coming in contact with all of these things that showed you where a thing came from. And I never, I never will forget. I went to my auntie and I said, if I go into this church on their Easter Sunday, when in their mind they are worshiping the resurrection of the Savior, if I go into that church and I release this information that's in this book, I said, they're going to destroy me. They're going to run me out of there. And my auntie told me, she said, well, that's one thing about using the scripture. If you ain't stepping on nobody's toes, then you ain't doing the right thing. So that's one of the things that I was made aware of. However, I never got to go in there. I chose to opt out of that because I myself was steeped in sin. I myself was out in the streets cheating on my wife. I myself 
was out doing dope. I myself was out doing everything under the sun. And the only thing that will cause me to be put in a position to where I get to do that teaching in church was out of the pure motive that my wife had to get me back in the church. But imagine what that would have did. That would have guaranteed my fate that I was never coming back to church. It would have caused. So it had to be a level of wisdom that was used for the overall well-being of everybody. Then I come to understand through wisdom that God had, didn't show me that so that I can go into the church and try to change the pastor's mind. He showed me that. So that I can now begin again with my children and start teaching them the right way. Because once I seen that about Easter, I immediately went to Christmas. And it was back in 1993 that I started coming in contact with the root of what was Christmas. And the pagan uh, part of it, the Saturnalia and all of those things. And I knew those things all the way since back then. All the way since back then. I became a destructive force amongst the people that loved me because of the information I had come in contact with. And after I had left a trail of damage, what well, Easter is pagan? Easter, like, what a Christmas tree? Well, where did Easter egg come? I know where it come from. It come from. It come from this. This is God of I know where Christmas. You see, I left a trail of damage because I was trying to impart things to people that God imported to me. And it never was for the people. It was for me to get it so that I could start training my children and being responsible for what had been placed in my care in the right way. Nevertheless, I did that. And I didn't understand why I had been shown those things until the Most High smited me. He smited me. After I left a trail of damage and destroyed everything, oh, they, they, you know, they all messed up. They all messed up, you know, and I find myself isolated and all alone. See, it's easy for a lot of you on social media platform because the majority of people on your friend page, they have the same corrupt, rot gut thinking that you got. But try it. it. Try getting exposed to information when there ain't no social media platform, when there ain't nobody that you can commune with about what you believe, when it ain't nobody that's getting the same information because the information is being released by the spirit one individual at a time. You try it in your everyday life when you don't have all of these things and you can see clearly the trail of damage that you have because you ain't got no Facebook to go get on when your family don't want you around. You ain't got no no YouTube videos to go and watch after you done made a trail of damage. You ain't got no place to go to after you done been kicked out of church because don't none of these things exist. And then you find yourself isolated in a place all by yourself because of information that you have learned that everybody else ain't learned. Facebook and YouTube and those things do us a great injustice because there is no place for the spirit to teach us. When the Spirit teaches us, He equips us with what we need and shows us how we are to deal or use the things that He has given us amongst our brothers and sisters. When in my day, there was not those things. The only thing that the world could work on is like the most high is like, okay, now you know what's right. What you gonna do with it? Don't worry about your brothers and sisters. I will show them the same thing that I showed you in my own time. What you going to do? So since 1993, I assassinated Santa Claus in my house. Since 1993, my children stopped getting Christmas gifts. Since 19, oh yeah, it was a war. And the war got real thin because your wife don't know what you know. Your wife don't know what you know. And when you come and you try to tell your wife that now you at a war, in your house because you don't want the Christmas tree. She wants the Christmas tree. And because she don't know what you know, you got a war breaking out. And the most high is right there and said, okay, well, you got to find a way to balance this thing out because you cannot become a tyrant in your own home because of what people don't know. And so I had to come to the place to where, you know what? I had to hold fast. And you can explain things to your children because their mind and their understanding is more receptive than somebody that has been walking in something for 20, 30, 40 years. So I just start dealing with the children. 
The Christmas tree didn't disappear immediately. You know, whether I wanted it or not, it didn't disappear. Oh, yeah, I could have been a man. I could have raised up. Oh, no, I, I could have been a tyrant. But that wouldn't have been good for my family structure because of all of these things that I knew. And I end up getting beat with them because it was lonely. It was lonely without my family. When I had been just like them, raised from children to do these things, it was lonely with me not showing up at the Christmas dinner, at the Thanksgiving dinner. It was lonely for me being isolated all by myself. And I really didn't have to. And so the most I started speaking, see, you ain't got to be isolated and alone and by yourself. You can still love on your family, no matter what they're doing, no matter where they're at. That is not you. You can still do those things. And slowly I started to understand I could do those things. And I hold fast to my conviction. But it was my convictions that was governing my life that started causing my family to see things. Where they thought you was just going through a phase after so much time, they realized it wasn't no phase and you really was on to something. And they see that you can be around and you can love them, but you don't operate the same way. And I also started receiving wisdom that the Christmas and the Thanksgiving and the holidays that we were celebrating, those things we were celebrating did not line up with the things that were contained in the book. Now, somebody on here that has celebrated Christmas, show me one time where your grandpa and your grandma and them came through the door and gave each other little children to go fondle with. Show me one place in the scripture where they was worshiping, celebrating Christmas as it was written in the book. See, you can't find that there. And so it was a wisdom that was steadily unfolding. It said, even though the root of the thing is right there, that is not the reason why they do it. They are completely oblivious and ignorant of what the root of a thing is. Henceforth, that is one of the reasons why Jesus came and said, and let the truth be told, many of you that's doing this Christmas stuff, you wouldn't know nothing if it wasn't for Google. You wouldn't know nothing if it wasn't for YouTube and Facebook. You wouldn't know half of nothing if it was not for the brothers and sisters that have been walking with the Most High all of these years that come forth to bring videos. If it wasn't for those men and those women, you wouldn't know anything. You know why? Because until most of you found out that I'm a Hebrew Israelite, you wasn't even interested in reading the Bible. You wasn't even interested until most of you found out that. You see? And then why are we doing this video? Because now that Christmas is over, now that it's over, it is time for the Most High to deal with those that have dealt harshly or treacherously with their brothers. And the problem is that we ain't never going to deal with anybody outside of, um, according to our frame of mind or what we think about a thing. We're always going to deal with brothers and sisters according to God's wisdom and according to God's word. So let's let the truth be told. If it was not for these things that we have in social media, many of you wouldn't know anything. Many of you ain't dedicated no life. You ain't dedicated no time. The only reason why you study in the Bible and all of this is so that you can find things in there to keep coming back fighting with each other about and say that you're serving the Lord. You don't serve the Lord like that. I don't compromise. I don't, I give it to you raw. Well, how you think God felt about you when you was in your place of ignorance? When you was the kid that was receiving the Christmas gift? You was the kid that was looking for Santa Claus. You was the kid that was being told the lies. But because you were told the lies, you thought that there was truth and you was living by him. Now that you have gotten grown, you come back and you start smiting everybody that was in the same place that you was in. And you don't realize that you're keeping judgment and wrath upon yourself for not treating your brothers like the most high have treated you. I've been that dude already. So I don't come out here. There are people that come. Listen, let me tell you something. I've been doing this for a long time. I got kicked out of church. I came to social media. The spirit enlightened me to who I am. Hey, you know what? It didn't take all of these videos and sitting up under people to come to understand who I was. It was the spirit of the most high that done that. 
It was the spirit. And right to this day, it is the spirit that teaches me the things that I'm going to come and teach first to my wife, then to my children, and then to any of the brothers and sisters that gravitate toward a video. It is the spirit of the most high that have done that. It is not sitting up at the feet of no man. So now that Christmas is over, we'll say like, like the beloved brother, it is no, it's not grievous to me to come and say the same thing to you again. I said it on the last video, we have brothers and sisters that get mad because they think that you're talking about them. What they don't understand, I'm not talking about anybody. But the old folks used to say, if the shoe fit, then wear it. You want somebody to receive what you're saying, yet you can't receive what God is saying. You're telling people and convicting people based on man's information and something that man did. And when we come and tell you that this is a day that God had made, we should rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what man put on top of it. God overrides everything because he is the one that created the day. And then when we come and start rebuking brothers and sisters, they get angry. But let me tell you something, baby. I didn't seen this over and over again. I done been kicked out of church, come to social media. I done had thousands of friends as soon as they hear something they don't like they gone but we are with scripture they came from among us that it might be made manifest that they were not of us for had they been of us it, they would have had the same spirit and no doubt they would have continued with us so i have done and been through all of that we'd have been drugged through the mud on facebook we'd have been drugged through the mud on facebook yep we'd have been drugged through the mud Facebook. I done been slandered, cussed out, told they go find the nearest cliff and fall off and just die. Go play in the street. I done been blocked off of thousands of people when they hear something that they don't want to hear. But that's on them. But you're the person that's out there trying to tell somebody something. But you can't take the chastisement when it boomerangs and comes back at you. Because God don't give you his word to go out and beat your people down. He is the one that's going to gather his people up. Oh yeah, we done seen all that. So we're, we're completely unaffected by those things. We know that they're going to happen because that's how the Most High separate those that say that they believe him versus those that really do genuinely believe in him. If you, if you really believe in the Most High, then you're going to operate like Jesus said. By keeping my commandment, men shall know that you are my disciples. Why is he say by keeping my commandment shall men know? Many of you have reverted. You're trying to keep every commandment in the world, but you ain't keeping what Jesus said. God, who has sun-dried time in diverse manners in time past, he spoke to the fathers of Israel and he used the prophets to do it. But in these last days, he ain't speaking to no prophets. He ain't speaking by no Torah. He's speaking by his son who had been pointed air over all things. That's why he said, on, the, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. What are the two commandments? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, all thy strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. In doing these, thou have fulfilled all the law and the prophets. You ain't gonna tell me you keeping God's commandments. You keeping the prophets and you running around here stepping on your brother every chance you get talking about you don't compromise this. You gonna let the truth fly this. You ain't gonna tell me you serving the most high. He said because on these two commandments, loving the Lord thy God and loving your brother, hang all the laws in the prophet. And when you understand that, you, you understand it don't make no difference how much knowledge you got. If love ain't the foundation of it, it's better that you were ignorant. It's better that you was born stillborn so that you couldn't become a disaster to nobody's life. You ain't going to tell me. Now, I'm giving you an idea because I want the brothers and sisters to understand what's being said. I'm not saying that you're wrong about what you're saying. I'm not saying that you're wrong about the truth that you know. You're right about the truth. But the truth has to be used in a way that's conducive to building brothers and sisters up. And fact of the matter is, many things learned today will not be understood until later. So you can get some truth and then you can use that truth. Not understanding how it's supposed to be used and leave a trail of damage. Henceforth. Jesus left some things on record as to how we should deal with our brothers and sisters.
Because we ourselves are still in the learning process. We ourselves are still growing. We ourselves still don't know all it is for us to know. And we'll stagnate our own growth and incur injury to ourselves when we allow what we are learning to make us forget that we ourselves are in the same condition that our brother's in. So, so, so the whole thing is this. Men have had their way. We get a nice good stretch beginning with Halloween. Hitting brothers with information. You'll go out and teach something that's heathenistic and paganistic to your brother. And you yourself won't accept what the Most High is trying to teach you. So we get a good stretch from Halloween to New Year's. Now that that Christmas is over and men have had their way and men have been free to release what they feel and how they think about a particular thing. Now that Christmas is over, let God have his way. We'll start by saying this again. This is a day that the Most High have made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. Another scripture on top of that, out of the book of Psalms, God's mercy is new every day. I'm a blessed the Most High. New mercies I see every day. Don't you know that the brother you was talking about yesterday, about Christmas, if God woke him up today, God have shown him new mercy today. So everything you said yesterday about your brother, it don't even have no place anymore. But what you do have to do is you do have to look ahead now to the 364 days that you got to face. Now let's let God put the spotlight on the life of the one that had the spotlight on their brother. And we'll look at the words of what Jesus said in order to bring our brothers and sisters to a place because God desires that we walk together in brotherly love, harmony, and unity. And those that you can't find harmony with, you stay away from. Let's go. Let's see. Anybody going to block me? Going to block me now. And if you hang around me, even in the midst of disagreement, if you hang around me, even if you get rebuke, if you hang around me, even then, guess what? We will end up walking together with a greater bond than we ever could have because now we can understand each other. Listen to what Jesus said. You keep my commandment and you will know, men will know, you're my disciple. Now, look at this. We try to show men that we are his disciples by quoting scripture. Most of it that we quoting, we ourselves don't keep. He said, by keeping my commandment, that's how men go know. What is commandment? You love God. If you love God, you'll love your brother. If you love God and you love your brother, men will know that you his disciple by the love that they receive him from you. Love can only be measured by the sacrifice that you're willing to make. So nobody cares about what you think about a thing. Nobody cares. The truth that you know is not that important. Sometimes the truth that you know have to take a back seat so that love can have its way. If you love God, you love your brother. And if you love your brother, you will be able to draw lines of distinction between what will build your brother up versus what will destroy your brother. This is how men going to know that you're the most highest child. You see, and when you start breaking down paganistic things, you ain't using God's word. You done come on Facebook teaching the devil's word. Oh, I know you ain't think of it like that. I know most of you didn't think about it like that, but I'm telling you that's exactly what it was. When you go to Wikipedia, you go to Google, and it start giving you where a thing came from, and then you take that wickedness of where a thing came from, and you start teaching that to your brothers and sisters, you expose them to a level of evil that they were better off if they never knew. I know you didn't think about it like that, baby, but that's the difference between a man's opinion and the spirit of the Most High moving. That's the difference. 
and I'm going to show you and we're going to back it up with scripture and I'm going to tell you if you got mad at me for rebuking you. Let me tell you why I rebuke you. I rebuke you because I'm going to be one that's going to hold dear to what the word of the Most High said. If you love me, you keep my commandment. Understanding this, that God in sundry time, in diverse manners, in time past, he spoke to the prophets. And the prophets, the people never listened to the prophets because your forefathers was wicked to the point to where now he got to speak to us by his son who has been appointed heir over all things. Don't come back telling me all this stuff about your forefathers. You're supposed to be serving the one that got up. Now, let's see what he had to say. This is why he said it. And the reason why I do it with the brothers and sisters is not because I celebrate Christmas. I just told you I ain't celebrated Christmas in over 30 years. My children ain't celebrated Christmas in over in, in over 30 years that I ain't celebrated. We ain't my children. When I stop eating flesh and blood, guess what? My first responsibility ain't to Facebook. I got to make sure my wife understand it. Make sure that my children understand. And then I come and deal with my brothers. Let's see what the Messiah got to say. Watch this. Watch this. This is what Jesus said. You say you love Jesus? If you love Jesus, you'll keep his commandment. If you love Jesus, you'll keep his commandment. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. Judge not that ye be not judged. You got people out there taking pot shots, secret pots. We don't care about none of that. We know that you only do it because your mind ain't matured enough to be able to fully understand what's being said. And there is a difference between edification, reproof, and rebuke. And so wherever through the course of the video, each one of these three things are going to be contained in it. There are going to be some that's going to get edified. There are going to be some that's going to get corrected. And there are going to be some that's going to get rebuked. That is not something that we strategically do. We do that for the whole family because it's what's contained in the book. Now, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandment. And then men are going to know that you are my disciples. Now, if Jesus tell you, judge not, he said, judge not. You say, well, why, Jesus? Why ain't supposed to judge? Ain't that why I got the word? Ain't that why I know what the word say? So I can go out and judge these things? He said, no, nah, I'm telling you don't judge. Not because you got to. Don't judge because. Don't judge that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you yourself shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. That's the basis of why we tell brothers and sisters, hey, man, if you done learned these things, leave that Christmas stuff alone. Don't go mess with your brothers and sisters. Leave them there. Pray for them. Pray for them and just live your life. We, we don't tell you that because we ourselves want to go worship Christmas. We don't tell you that just for nothing. We tell you that because we know something that you don't know. Those of us that have been judged already for judging other people, we know that that's something you don't want to go through. And out of our love for the brethren, we'll go out of our way, even to being slandered and blocked and kicked to the side. We'll go out of our way to make people understand the reason why we do it. I don't do it because I'm against nobody. I don't do it just to go meddling with nobody. I do it because I have been one that had judged people harshly and the most high turn around and judge me. And when I start understanding these scriptures, this is why he tell us do not judge. Why? Because every man that has life in his body body is guilty of sin. Therefore, it puts him in a place to where he has no right to judge anything. God, who has sundry time and diverse manners in time past, spoke to the fathers by the prophets. In these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, who has been appointed heir over all things. You see, when the Messiah destroyed the law of sacrifice, he released the people, but he also had to release the people from the, from the law of judgment. You see, so he put judgment to the side and judgment is placed in his care and he will judge every man according to his works upon his return. So he tell you, don't get in my place. Don't 
judge nobody. I'm the only one that can judge anybody. So he tells you, this is not for you to do. There was a time when I was speaking from the prophets and the priests that they had judgment in their hands. They determined whether a man died from a rock. They determined whether or not he brought an animal. They are the ones that determined his judgment. He said, but I destroyed that and I put judgment, took judgment out of men's hands and I am the one that will judge because I am the rightfully appointed heir. He said, therefore, I'll put it in scripture and tell you, judge not. Because if you judge your brother, I will be forced to judge you. He said, and with the same level of measurement that you judging your brother, I am going to judge you with that same level of judgment. So when your level of judgment is in a place to where I don't compromise, I ain't this, I got the word, I know what the, when your mindset is like that, you have set yourself at odds with him and brought yourself in a place to where he will judge you unmercifully. He who have shown no mercy shall be judged unmercifully. But he who have shown mercy, his mercy shall win out over judgment. You see, we don't say these things because we got problems with people. We try to show our brothers and sisters that are growing. You are growing. And when we're growing, we become zealous with the word that we know. We got to work that thing out. But you got to be very careful. So Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. For with what measure you judge, you're going to be judged. Now, for all of you brothers and sisters that been harping on Christmas and talking about people and all that, that was your judgment yesterday. I wonder if your judgment is going to look like God's judgment. Because now that you have done that, today is the day of reckoning. Let's look at how the Most High is going to deal with you concerning your judgment. And when we get through putting the next half up on this to show you what Jesus meant and why he told you don't judge, you should be on your face. But we know many brothers and sisters won't be on their face because they themselves will say it, but they will not do it. They have the same pharmaceutical type of spirit. So let's, without delay, go to the book. Let's go to the book and we're going to deal with days. We're going to deal with holidays. Okay, y'all wanted to deal with Christmas yesterday. So let's go deal with the rest of the holidays. Let's go deal with the rest of the holidays. That's how we do that. Now, for every brother out there that had a post to put out there, looking at somebody else. You could have been living your life. You could have been using that energy to really do something productive. You use all of that energy wasted, all of that time looking at somebody, what somebody else is doing. You don't have the capacity to change nobody's life. You spent time that was wasted. And then you brought judgment on yourself on top of that. And the very people that need to hear the video, we know that they're going to escape that. They don't want to come on here now. And besides that, I ain't seen not one zero when I ask, show me anybody who have never celebrated Christmas. That means that we all at some point in our life have been guilty of the same thing. And if you've been guilty, you ain't got no, you're the last person that need to come and try to judge me about anything. So let's go. Now that Christmas is over, let's go and show you all of the days that you want to hold. Passover, feast of weeks, feast of boots. Feast the dedication. Let's go. Let's go and see how the Most High looking at you. Julie Ray Weiss, that's wonderful. Because if you ain't never celebrated Christmas, that's wonderful. That means that that's a level of corruption that you ain't never experienced. But you one out of thousands. So let's go and see. Michael Royster says he ain't never celebrated Christmas. And that's beautiful because in this hour, our responsibility is to teach the next generation of our children. And in this hour, there are many brothers and sisters that have come into truth. And when they had their children, their children were never exposed to these type of things. Some people were born in, in Jehovah Witness where Jehovah Witness didn't celebrate Christmas. And so they have never been exposed to that level. But I'm going to tell you, oh, say, so Julie Wise says, oh, no, she did. Okay, well, if you did, then 
you, you know, your zero don't count. I'm looking for people that can put a zero up there. And the zero stands for I ain't never celebrated Christmas. All right. So it's good. Now. Now. So let's go see. This is why Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. And many of you, you don't understand that you're storing up judgment for yourself because of what you don't know. Just like you judging your brother for what he don't know. See, everything is a revolving door and and, and, and every knife and, and the sword got two ends on it and the boomerang got two ends on it and you throw the boomerang at your brother and you fail to realize when the boomerang come back, you ducking. Oh no, the boomerang coming back. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's go to the feast days and we're going to show you why Jesus said, Judge not, or else you'll be judged. In this particular case, it could be melted down into a many different areas. But in this particular case, we're going to melt it down to everybody that like to thrust out what they're going to thrust out on people because they worship in Christmas or because they celebrate Thanksgiving. they celebrating things that they don't know where the root of it come from. You see? So let's look. And our, our, our brothers, our self-righteous brothers in the, in the Israelite community, because they are the ones that's guilty of doing it. They ain't doing nothing that Jesus told them to do. They doing everything that they choose to do and choose to make right. Well, OK, you really believe what the books say. Let's skip on back to the time when God was speaking to our forefathers and what you couldn't receive from the words that was coming out of the spirit. Just because I didn't have a Bible, you might be able to receive. It coming out of the Bible. This is the book of Jubilees, sixth chapter, and we're going to begin. We're going to begin reading at we're going to begin at the 24th verse where the Most High is talking to Noah. And Noah ordained them for himself as feasts for generations forever. Keep that in mind. Forever. And many of us know because you go out and teach, well, this, this shall be upon your, your generations forever. And so you say, okay, we got to keep this forever. Okay, well, guess who ordained it? Noah did. He said he ordained for himself as feasts for the generations forever so that they have become thereby a memorial to him. And on the new moon of the first month, he was bidden to make for himself an ark. And on that day, the earth became dry and opened the ark and saw the earth. And on the new moon of the fourth, the fourth month, the, the mouths of the depths and the abyss were closed. And on the new moon of the seventh month, all the mouths of the abyss of the earth were open and the waters began to descend. 27, on the new moon of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains were seen and Noah was glad. Verse 28, and on this account, he ordained them for himself as a feast for a memorial forever. And thus they are ordained. Verse 29, and they placed them on heavenly tables. Each had 13 weeks from one to another past their memorial from the first to the second and from the second to the third and from the third to the fourth. Verse 30. And all the days of the commandment will be two and 50 weeks and these will make an entire year complete. Now that's important because we know that a year is 52 weeks. These things were ordained by Noah. All right. Verse 31. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tables and there is no neglecting this commandment for a single year or from year to year. And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning. 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year. Now watch this. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you meet, it shall be measured unto you again. When Noah was dealing with these feast days and things of that nature. Hold on. Where you go? 
Oh, you want Arby's? Okay, I'll see you later. Now, now, yesterday, where Christmas is concerned, was the 365th day. Because it come around. One complete cycle, right? That's 365 days for Christmas to come around. So our brothers are laying dormant, waiting on those 365 days to come around so that they can put their mouths on their brothers and sisters that's doing things that they don't do. Now, now we start dealing with the things that they should be doing. This ain't dealing with what their brothers should be doing. This is dealing with what is real. You say you is real. You say you is real and got a problem with what everybody else is doing. Now the most high said, okay, now that the spotlight is off everybody else, let me put the spotlight on you and show you what's required of you and watch me judge you in the same manner that you have judged your brothers and sisters. Verse 32, and command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning. That's a commandment. 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year. And they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts. For everything will fall out in them according to their testimony. Now, Noah's saying, on this reckoning, there shall be 364 days. It will constitute a complete year. And according to this, 364 days a year, these feasts shall last throughout your generations. That means your Passover sh shall last throughout your generation. Your feast of weeks, your tabernacles, your new moons, your feast of dedication, they shall all be funneled from one generation through the next. But it will be according to 364 days. And look what he said. He said, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts. For everything will fall out of them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. That's what he's saying. He said, as long as they're governing their selves according to a 364 day a year calendar, then they will not disturb any of their days or any of their new moons or any of their Sabbaths because they operate according to what I have established as commandment. Come on, commandment keepers, keeping the laws, the statutes and the commandments and the judgment. Come on in. He said they will not disturb them. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons and their years will be dislodged from this order. And they will disturb the seasons and the years will be dislodged and they will neglect the ordinances and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and they will forget the new moons and the seasons and the Sabbaths and they will go wrong as to the order of years. Don't tell me you're going to go out here and judge your brother harshly for something that he is doing when you yourself ain't doing it. You have already gone wrong. Thou, why do thou behold the speck that is in your brother's eye when you got a plank hanging out of your out of your eye? Because guess what? These ordinances and these commandments that Noah was given were around long before any European ever put a pagan day onto the calendar. And on top of that, it's the pagan's calendar. It's the heathen's calendar. So he got the right to put whatever he want to put. You are living by his calendar. Oh, thou hypocrite. First go and cast the log out of your own eye. Then you might see clearly enough to cast a speck. But many of us have become breakers of the most highest law. And now we want to become judgmental when men are breaking the laws of men. 
or men are obeying these type of laws. Oh, I know, I know. Even though we say the word, you say, even though we say the word, do be not like them for they'll say it, but they won't do it themselves. Even though we say the word, even though brothers be on the video, even though, even though they've been watching, even though we tell them that you out of order, we tell them that you can't do these things because you ain't living by a 364 day calendar. We're telling you that you're going to, you're about to heap up an unholy day and put God's name on it. Just the same way that the pagan took a pagan day and put it on a holy day that God had made. This is a day that God had made. And and the heathen came and put Christmas on it. But you ain't no different than the heathen. But because you're out of place, you're going to heap up a wicked day. And then you're going to go put the Feast of Tabernacle, the Feast of Weeks, the Sabbath. You're going to put all of those days on wicked days. Simply because you are ignorant, judge not that, that he be not judged. If you think that this message is one of rebuke, then you are absolutely right. We aim to snatch you in the collar and shake you until you ain't got no choice but to go sit down, fall on your face, and ask the Most High to forgive you for your wickedness. Talk about Christmas is wicked. Israel had been the most wicked people on the planet. That's why we have been up under the foot of the Gentiles all of these years. And unless we find a way to repent from our own wickedness and stop worrying about what everybody else is doing, we're going to be in trouble. So let's go. It says, and all of the children of Israel will forget. And all of the children of Israel will forget. And all of the children of Israel will forget. You going back into the Torah won't bring your memory back. You got amnesia, baby. You got selective amnesia. On one end, you want to hold on to the good things that your forefathers did. In the same breath, you want to deny the wickedness of what they done. You got amnesia. And the children of Israel will forget. And they will not find the path of the years. And they will forget the new moons and the seasons and the Sabbaths. And they will go wrong as to the order of years. For I know and from henceforth shall I declare it unto thee. And it is not of my own devising. For the book lieth written before me on the heavenly tables of the division of days is ordained. Lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles. Go on and put your paganistic day on the feast of the Gentiles calendar and watch what happened. Go on and try to determine where the Passover. Go on and try to determine where the feast of booths. Go on and try to determine the feast of dedications while you use a Gregorian, a wicked Gentile calendar. And this is what the Most High declared already that you will forget. He said, Lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their own error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. Now it disturbed the seasons and cometh in from year to year. Ten days too soon. And you're talking about your brothers that's trying to do things by the moon that's governing the days. Oh, this is the Sabbath. The Sabbath is on a Monday. The Sabbath is on a Tuesday because we look at that kind of moon. But the most hot already declared that you would go wrong while you did these things. And no, you're trying to determine what he, he said. Notice how the moon coming in 10 days too soon. For though there will surely be those who would make observations of the moon, how it disturbed the season and cometh in from year to year, 10 days too soon. And for this reason, the years will, will come up on them when they would disturb the order and they will make an abominable day, the day of the testimony. And they will make an abominable day, the day of testimony. And they will make an abominable day, the day of testimony. Don't tell me nothing about nobody serving Christmas when every time I turn around, you're jumping on planes and running in different places trying to make an abominable day the, uh, uh, a day of the Lord. And this is what the book say. And ignorance ain't no excuse because you don't use your brother's ignorance as no excuse to give him a pass for celebrating Thanksgiving or Christmas. So why should the Most High give you a pass? You gonna make an abominable day. The day of the Most High. This ain't none of my word. This is the words of the Lord. The righteous indignation spirit don't belong to me because I don't have nothing to gain. But it's how the most high feel when he see you that's supposed to take the word and build his people up. Take his word and start destroying his people. This is what he feel about you.
Since you want to harp on somebody, let the most high harp on you with this rebuking and see how you feel. See if it don't make you feel like your brother. That's the thing that brings us to the point to where we learn how to treat each other. When I see what I was doing to my brother and the most high do the same thing to me, then I come to the understanding. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I didn't know I was doing it, but I won't do it no more. I didn't know I was beating my brother up that bad. I didn't know I was doing that. But when God do it to you. You'll learn not to do it to your brother. Let's read it again. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. Now it disturbeth the seasons and cometh in from year to year ten days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and they will make an abominable day the day of testimony and they will make the abominable day the day of testimony and they will make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day and they'll make an abominable day the day of testimony and they'll make an unclean day into a feast day because they are not governing themselves according to a 364 day a year calendar and they are steep in wickedness against the most high and you mean to tell me you got the nerve enough to go out there at your brother who because of his ignorance is doing things that he have no knowledge of you see, these things that your brother was doing, they only affect him. But this bullshit that y'all doing, it's affecting the whole family of Israel. There is a difference between something that somebody is doing and only them themselves are affected. Then there's a big difference between something that you're doing that's affecting the whole family of Israel. Because all of you jokers that's out here doing this nonsense, you're affecting the whole family of Israel. He said, and they will make an abominable day, the day of their testimony. And they will make an unclean day, a holy day. So that makes you no better than your brother. It makes you worse off than your brother. Because your brother is celebrating something that came by way of a man. And you are breaking something that came by way of God. That's why Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. That's why he called you a hypocrite. Because the plank represents a greater sin than the sin that your brother is committing. You looking at your brothers that's committing sin, what you call sin on Thanksgiving and Christmas. But you're committing an even greater sin because your sin is against God. And they will make an abominable day, the day of their testimony. And they will make a feast day. They will, they will make an unclean day, a feast day. And they will confound all the days. And the holy, they will confuse all of the days. They will confuse all. What can you add to all? What can you add to all? Come on, scholar. Come on, my Torah sinner brothers. Come on, anybody that's claiming to be Israel. What can you add to all? They will confuse all the days. They will confuse all the days. They will confuse the holy day with the unclean day. And the unclean day with the holy day. For they will go wrong as to the months and the Sabbaths and the feast and jubilees. For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. And you can feel how you want to feel about me. But this is what the book told us to do. When those that need to be rebuked get rebuked, you go and testify to them. Show them the error of their ways. Show them the plank or the log that's sticking in. Show them their hypocritical way. Show them the judgment that I will bring upon them for what they're doing to their brothers. For this command, I command and testify thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death, Noah, thy children will disturb them. And here's how they're going to disturb them. So that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and to the seasons and to the Sabbaths and to the festivals. And they will eat 
all kinds of blood. Don't tell me nothing about that. You ain't talking about somebody celebrating Christmas. And not only have you confused all of the most high days because of the calendar that you're living by, but every one of those days, you want to bring your sacred creation and you want to have your mouth stained with the blood of his creation. Don't tell me I know what I'm talking about, baby. I know what it's like for the most high to snatch you in your collar and rebuke you. And you out there thinking that you know something. He that think he knows, no knows nothing that he should know. If you leave a fool's presence when you perceive that he don't have no knowledge, you might get mad at me for my excitement, but my excitement don't come from me. My excitement is born out of the zeal and the fire of the spirit that will judge every man according to his work, especially those that have stepped on the father's people. Not only will you make an abominable day your day of testimony Feast the booth keeper, but you also will take an unclean day and put God's holy day on it. Come on, feast the tabernacles. He said, for this reason, they shall confuse every last one of the days and they shall go wrong and they shall make a holy day, a unclean day and an unclean day, a holy day. Come on, my Sabbath class, my Sabbath, Sabbath keepers. And the last cap off was this, and they shall eat all manner of blood. And you mean to tell me where the hell do you find time to be talking to somebody about Christmas? When the sins that you're committing have reached up into the nostrils of the most high to the point to where he said, you are a stench in my nostrils. You come on and tell me somebody because we're going to use the book and the fire of the spirit is going to lead us. We ain't come on here with no pre-programmed mindset of who we going to run down. We're going to come and do the work that the spirit lead us to do. And in this particular case, you judge not that you be not judged. And for every person that ever has something to say about anybody that was doing anything on another day, you better get a mirror and look at the foolishness in your own life. And as we said before, there will be those that ruin because they take it personal. And this is going to be a message because it is personal, but it's not personal dealing with me. It's personal from the most high spirit to your spirit. It has to be personal because the same way you want to interject some type of truth into somebody else's life, the truth that you're interjecting is the truth that come by way of a devil. But the truth that we're going to interject it is going to be the truth that come by way of God's word that'll reach in here and grab you by the throat and tell you to get yourself together. And if you tuck your tail and run off, you ain't running from the so-called elder. You're running from the word of God that elder just read for you. How be it you can say that you love the Lord. You heard his cry. But when somebody bring you his word, you tuck your tail and you, well, you tuck your tail and you run, you cur, you run. But when you get wherever you're going, you get to Japan with your bowl of rice. You best believe that that same word, that same spirit will be right there waiting on you. Everybody always trying to take their brother and make themselves look good. You think you can dress your way into the favor of the most high? You think you can pray your way into the favor? You think you can read your way into the favor of God? You are as a thief and a robber. He that enter into the, it must enter in by the door. He that climb up beyond any other way, he is a thief and a robber. And you will know when you're a child of God. Because you'll be able to handle rebuke when it comes. You'll be able to handle correction when it comes. You'll be able to understand that your main source and your main purpose when you get the word is for the sake of edifying the brother. How pleasant it is when brothers can dwell together in the spirit of unity. It is like the precious ointment that went on the Aaron's head, slid to his beard and on to his skirts. God wants unity between the brethren. Don't try to make it like I'm justifying nobody in they see. God wants 
unity, whatever it takes. Love overrides a multitude of faults and sins and hangups. Don't tell me that you got to deal treacherously with your brother because you got the truth. No, you're a liar and God's truth ain't even in you. You're in it for your own reason to make your own self look good. But it won't happen over here. So they might as well just block me off of the video and block me off the page and let that be a manifestation to the brothers and sisters that are on looking, that they came from amongst us, that it might be made manifest. They were not of us. Had they been of us, no doubt they would have continued. And you ever think about this? The disciples had the same crooked mindset. When they seen brothers out there, they wasn't all the way right. They were still steep in the cultural things, but they was talking about Jesus. Just like our Christian brothers are talking about Jesus. Just like the ones celebrating Thanksgiving and Christmas. They talking about Jesus. No, they don't fully understand, but they talking about Jesus. And the disciples said the same thing. And they ain't going to paraphrase it. I'm going to go get the scripture and read it for you. I'm going to get the scripture and read it for you. Because I want this message to run all the way down to your toes. I'm going to read it for you. Since everybody want to talk scripture around, let's talk some scripture around that really matter. Let's go to Mark, ninth chapter. Mark, chapter 9. Watch this right here. Let me show you what I'm time coming out. Mark, chapter 9. You see, it ain't no new thing under the sun. This is how our brothers and sisters are. And the stories are in the Bible. It said, it said, but they held their peace for by the way, they had disputed amongst themselves who should be the greatest. See, that's what our brothers and sisters are doing on Facebook. That's why the camps can't get along. That's why they're making videos of each other. That's why you got fights breaking out. That's why you try to talk to people and they want to debate. They want to argue because they're debating among themselves who's going to be the greatest amongst each other. Ain't nobody great on God's program. Now, here go John. And John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us, and we forbade him because he followed not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can slightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cold cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. So basically what they're doing is that you got our brothers in Israelite heritage finding problems with everybody else. Because they ain't walking like they walking. 
He said, oh, I seen one. He using your name. He casting out devils in your name. Oh, I seen one. But see, rather than you focus on the fact that many of the people believe in Christmas have been born as children to believe in Christmas and they attach Christmas to the Savior. And because you see them doing something that you don't do and you don't understand what's at the root of why they doing it. So you go and you're talking about, look, I seen one. He using your name, but he's celebrating Christmas. I told him that he need to stop that stuff. I told him he said, Jesus said, no, nah, you the one that need to stop it. Let them people alone. It, it, there ain't going to be none that use my name and don't accomplish the will of my father. He said, and verily, verily, there is going to be very few that you hear using my name that work it evil in the way like that. Let me read it again. I want to make sure y'all get it. <clears throat> and John answered them saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he didn't follow us. We forbade him because he followed not us. Well, we seen one. He was casting out devils. He was using your name. We seen one that he was worshiping. He was worshiping. He was singing silent night, holy night. All is calm. All is bright. Round young virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. What was wicked about that? We seen one, master. We seen one. He was celebrating Christmas. We was seen one. He could cast out devils with the Christmas cow and the word that he was singing. But it was about the Messiah. And the Messiah said, but Jesus said, forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. And this is no justification of where people at. But those brothers were not where the disciples were at. They did not understand what the disciples had understood. But they heard about the goodness and the greatness of Yeshua Hamashiach or Jesus the Christ. They heard about his goodness and his greatness. And they believed on him even in spite of the fact that they still had cultural contamination. And the disciples seen it and got mad and said, they supposed to follow me. Look at I. Hebrew Israelite brothers thinking that everybody's supposed thinking that you're responsible for somebody's wake up when if God didn't wake you up you couldn't claim you can't claim nothing you can't claim nothing if God didn't wake you up why you want to be responsible for somebody's wake up what you're gonna do on a morning that you don't wake up whose wake up are you gonna be who gonna be responsible for waking you up he said leave them alone they using my name and if they be not against me, then they for me. You don't know what God going to do in nobody's life later on down the road. One man plant, another man water. God give the increase. You don't know what God going to do in somebody else's life. All of us should be focused on our own life. Focus on the own plank in your own eye. That's why it ain't no room for me to be bashing nobody. I don't know how to live by a 364 day a year calendar because I ain't never seen it. But I refuse to get caught up in all of this mess that people think is going to usher them some kind of way into God's favor when it's really leading you into a greater form of wickedness because all of us should be able to say, Are we all steeped in sin, Father. We lost everything. We forgot everything. The book told us that we was going to forget. And it's written in the heavenly tablets that we were going to forget. It ain't nothing that we can do about it. We are all doomed without your grace and without your mercy, Father. Oh, Father, just help us to learn how to love each other and know that you'll do the separating. You'll separate the wheat from the tab. You'll do the gathering. You'll gather your people together. You already have the names written in the book of life. Don't ever let me get to the point to where I think the thing that I'm reading can put me in a place to where I I can become the separator of wheat from tear or the judgment, the one that's going to bring judgment. I can't bring judgment on nobody. Oh, help me to repent and even help me with my unbelief because I heard the brother say it, but I just don't believe it. With that, I'm going to end the video. Peace and blessings.